Um, oh, damn, I don't even have a beer. All right, wow. What am I? Don't come back with no, no fucking. He... Don't come back with no. Uh... <laughs> I think he's coming for cider. Here's another cider. <laughs> Yo, welcome to Beers and Bars. <laughs> Your place for rapid fire hip hop discussion and of course, great beer. I am Kamal Kiddo. O2 the Golden Child, thank y'all for checking out last episode. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all check that joint out. We had the brother at the bar, you know what I'm saying, on. Sam Ross. Sam, Sam Ross, so check that episode out. Uh, we have another returning guest this week. So yeah, uh, last time she was here, we talked about some albums. And insecure, so we thought we'd bring her back yeah. for this episode. But she could introduce herself. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Denise, aka Kinky Suds. I am so thrilled to be back here today. Um, I mean, to really kind of get you guys started on drinks, I am gonna have single cut, right? She's good. Hey. She's good. I love the the art on this, and I was like, since it's kind of music related and sneaks, you know, I love sneakers. Uh, I was like, you know, I'll try this one out. So this is a it's Fuzzbox Double Dry Hop IPA, and it's 8.6%. Nice. So, now, where, where is that out by you? Is that in? Uh, oh, yeah. That? No, this is out in New York. All right. So I am <laughs> excited about this because, and then also for glassware, this is what I'll be rocking today. Oh! <laughs> Just saying. You Who know, is that? You know, Let's see that again. Which one? Who? Yeah, look at that. Got you. Got, okay. You know, know what I'm up. saying? So I got this glass because I did their um, their class they did recently for the certified beer server. Okay. And, you know, this was a, a token for, you know, finishing the class. So I was, like, really excited about that. I think the glass is beautiful. So, and hopefully this beer, because IPAs and I, we have, like, I like them. I used to hate them. But yeah. I'm now starting to, you know, um, understand and appreciate them a little bit more. So. Okay. You know. That's interesting. I, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> trying to get off of my, my IPA kick because I'm definitely, really? a, uh, I'm a basic bitch IPA guy. You know what I'm saying? I love stouts. <laughs> That's my first love, though. <laughs> hey, yeah. man. You know what? Hold on. Before you, before you bust out with, with something that's not awesome IPA, sauce. Right, yeah. The awesome sauce. Let me go mediocre sauce real quick. Okay. <laughs> what you got? Mediocre. But I got the cider. <laughs> Wait, what? Dogfish head, sixty minute IPA. Okay. Ooh. Which is um six percent. That's um, a classic. Our East Coast IPA, continually hopped with a slew of Northwest hops throughout the entire boil for a powerful citrusy hop character. Nice. I'll tell you right now, man. That it, when I first started my craft beer journey back in like 2013, 2014. Mm. I think everybody has maybe like their dogfish head. Like, you know, oh, you come sure. in on the 60 minute, 90 minute joints. Uh, so <laughs> that definitely, I might have to go back to some of my, you know what I'm saying? Shout out. Uh, Argus is no longer in, you know what I'm saying? Um, no longer in business. I see you got your Argus glass there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everybody, you know, you know what dog, you know about dogfish head, 60 minute, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, yeah. They, oh, yeah. they, they, they stopped making one of my favorite beers, which was their romantic chemistry in like 2017, 2018. Yeah, they did. So, yeah. Uh, but today I have uh, Denial and Era. This is Ooh. an English style, uh, English style pale ale from um, mm. Low Beaver Brewery, which is in Bloomington, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They have one of my favorite hazies, uh, Citraic. I think I had it on the show a couple oh, yeah. of weeks ago. Yeah. But this oh, is yeah. an English style pale ale. So uh, this is, what I think it's at 5%. Um, it's pretty much, you know, I would say super balanced. You know what I'm saying? It's more malt for it than hop for it, as you would expect from, you know, more traditional style pale ale. So as, as I said, I'm trying to, you know, back off of my, my double dry hop you know what i'm saying i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying people no, I feel uh, I feel diversify your palate that's, yeah. what, you're, that's what you're trying to do <laughs> i got some uh, i got a couple sours in the fridge i got a couple stouts so you know but yeah cheers everybody cheers 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 cheers, cheers. cheers. Um, come on first well, okay the first, we're gonna do a, a recap of insecure right we're doing right. a recap of the entire season of insecure i think Ooh. we have all seen it 
and yes. we're all gonna talk about it. Oh, um, like it is. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, we're talking about uh, Tiana Taylor's new album, the album. Uh, yeah. Had to do the hair, um, very similar to her. Oh, <laughs> true, true. Just true. saying. <laughs> um, but first, before we get into that, um, before we get into those two topics, let's talk about Kinky Suds and um, how have you been surviving? Um, the last time we talked to you was before George Floyd. Um, it was. So it was. Then, how has uh, that situation affected your city? Man. In general. Just yeah, the- in general. I mean... I mean, since since the podcast that we did together, um, you know, it's it's been a an interesting ride, I have to say, emotionally speaking, um, with the current climate that's been going on. I mean, when you first see it, I think for me, I was kind of just like it was a a bunch of emotions trying to come out at the same time. It was like, here we go with this shit again. And then it was also just when you actually hear the audio, because the first time I saw it, I didn't hear the audio. Yeah. And then when I saw it the second time, hearing him cry out, I mean, it just, it just really, really messed with me because you have this man who, you know, and they tried to discredit it by saying, well, he had a heart condition. He had, you know, some stuff in the system. And I'm like, you know, I know people who have heart issues and, you know, sometimes laying on your chest, even if you don't have pressure on you, like you're just laying, you know, on your chest or on your back you they have a hard time breathing sometimes yeah. if their heart is enlarge or whatever and so i'm just thinking not only did if he had that he already has that condition and then you're you know compounding that by being on him right, right. so right. you know listening to that hearing him cry out for his mother really just just shook me to my core and i had to step away a little bit from social media because it was just everywhere it was everywhere and you know, I get that they're trying to wear, raise awareness for it, but it's like, as a black person, you, we're constantly having to see these videos over and over again. Yeah. And it's, the videos are necessary because it, it forces people to see what happens because we have known that this stuff was happening for years, you know, yeah. for years. And it's not like this is an increase in what's happening. It's just they're being recorded at this point, right? So, yeah. you know, as a black person, you're like, I want this to be seen because I want people to understand what's been happening. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to keep witnessing the death of, I don't know you, but I don't want to keep seeing that over and over right. again, right. you know? And, right. and, and, you know, I, I had to step away from that for a little bit, but, you know, it's, you know, I talked to my parents about this and, you know, for them, they grew up in Detroit and they've had their instances with, with, you know, cops. I think everybody has had some type of incident or yeah. some type of run-in with a cop, you know, and, you know, we have these conversations and I'm sitting there listening to my parents talk about how things were for them growing up in Detroit. You know, they both were little kids when the riots in Detroit happened, right? My yeah. grandmother lived through that. You know, she, you know, came up from the South. So she, you know, grew up during a time where it was, it was, you know, okay for you to, you know, say certain things towards black people to, to have people segregated. And that's only a couple of generations back for me. Right. 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 Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was, it was hard for the past couple of weeks going through that. And then also while dealing with that, you still have the pandemic that's going on, right. you know, you're trying to be safe with that. And it frustrates me hearing about the science that's, you know, the, the information is being put out there. Right. And as a scientist first, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here reading this type of stuff and I'm thinking a lot of people are, you know, the information that's out there is it's not really clear. And I can mm-hmm. understand why people may be making some mistakes, but then it also frustrates me that people are willing to just say, fuck it mm-hmm. and not wear a face mask. Right. Not social distance. Yeah. Um, and then I just There's saw been, a video, uh, anti- you know, face mask rally. And the thing is that there was a video they just showed recently of a lady who was out with her kid and this lady comes up and coughs right in the face of her child. Yeah. yeah. Now, of course, the lady who did it said, well, you know, she wasn't social distancing. So I can understand because I've gone out to the grocery store. I go out every three to four weeks to kind of limit my exposure, right? right. And yeah. some people do not respect that. They do not do social distancing. So I can understand you could be like, okay, can you 
right? But the fact that you're going to come up in a kid's face, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I people are just getting outrageous right now. Like, I feel That's, like people yeah. are, yeah, it, it's it's getting outrageous. So with the pandemic, with the protests that have been going on, you know, peaceful protests, by the way, um, with people airing out their feelings seeing breweries being ripped to shreds for even stepping up and saying something about Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. um, trying to do certain beer initiatives and they're getting, you know, shitted on and saying they're being canceled because they're actually trying to say something. A lot of breweries that we love who aren't saying something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you have, you know, when my own personal life switching between two jobs. So I had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, so self-care was very important during that time. But, yeah. you know, I just, I try to keep in contact with people, check in on people because, you know, we're, we're isolated right now. So yeah. I try to check in on people, see how they're doing and also try and, you know, do my own self-care. So that involved really me drinking beer, sleeping and playing Last of Us Part Two. So that was my self-care. <laughs> That's what's up. I, yeah, I, um, I've been seeing people have been talking about that. I'm not that much of a gamer, but, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a tough, I think it's been a tough ride for all of us, you know, as we've been quarantined and seeing what happens with George Floyd and then all of the protesting. And then now we're at a point now where it seems like politics are about to kick back up. And, you know, yeah. this. I'm, I'm watching how this even something like a mask is being politicized and people are, I was watching the the uh, this interview with these people who were talking in Florida, and I was just like, you know, what is happening in the world? What is what is going on? So it's been, it's been a tough ride. So yeah, 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 it's been tough. How you two been holding up? Uh, I drink beer and run and and love on my family. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. That about that's good right. self care, though. You're active. Yeah. And you're still enjoying stuff, so that's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I'm in the middle of making a, a a film, and I'm social distancing. So it's basically going to be a film about a guy in quarantine. Oh my god, uh, that is going to be. What's the name of it? Have you come up with a name yet? I, I do actually. I do. Uh, I will give you the title. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, not on here. Right, you know I'll what? Shoot you I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead exactly. and give it to you. I mean, um, I, ex- I expect to finish it uh, within the next month. Uh, Ooh, okay, okay. But right now, I couldn't decide on better days or tomorrow. Uh-huh. So I've been just calling it better days tomorrow. And I really, I'm really, I'm really liking like that, that title. I like that. I really so, um, like I'm, that. Right now, I'm like, I've been making like a bunch of notes. Um, yeah. OT, I got, I got OT in a part right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to be the news reporter. Um, oh, I love this. Though. He got the voice yeah. for it, though. He really does. Yeah. <laughs> These so, news. <laughs> uh, but his, I'm, I'm doing it for his political views as well. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, think I'm a, good. Yeah. But, um. Nice. I like it. You know, so it's it's basically that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to prepare for this uh quarantine film and take notes as far as, you know, anti mass rally, um, you know, everything that's affecting humans during this time. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um yep. they're in the middle of a pandemic, people are rioting and looting, all of that. Like it's it's going crazy outside. Like it's mm-hmm. going crazy it's calmed down but there's still a pandemic there's still a virus out here even though cities are opening up it's not making any sense to me i don't get it yeah economy still has to be stimulated in that way where there are buyers and sellers of things you have to go out but you know it's weird it's weird it's weird weird times right now yeah it is I think it's funny that we'll be able to say that we live through a pandemic, which I think yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Um, and I, I, it just cracks me up because I watch so many like pandemic or zombie films, right? Yeah. And I'm like, man, what if some shit actually happened? And then you go, wait, <laughs> we actually are kind of in that right, right now. Yeah. And then you hear about how Brazil, their number of cases have, have just skyrocketed yeah. and they're second to us. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of other countries are starting to see a rise again. I'm like, here we go again. Here we go. Yeah, well, they just had to, they had to shut down Florida and, and uh, Texas, Texas again, right? 
Oh yeah. Oh, they shut down already. They shut oh, down. Oh yeah, they shut the down yesterday. Already. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, halfway through the day yesterday, they were like, "Wow," cut it. because the cases skyrocketed and whatnot. So again, we're in for a, I don't want to say fun, but interesting rest of the year. I think you know, as even in Illinois, fall. we kind of yeah, in Illinois, we're kind of going into stage four and what that looks like. So you know, Oof. good luck with that. Yeah, I don't know what that's gonna. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Luckily, I'm blessed to have a job where I'm, I'm going to be at home indefinitely. Same. So, Same. You know, True. Yeah. True. So yeah. So let's 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 talk let's talk about Denise and what uh, my my laptop was going to die on my clown, so I had to have my wife sneak my charger through the door real quick. <laughs> that was smooth. Uh, that was smooth. <laughs> I didn't notice. That was smooth. Hey. I didn't notice. That was smooth. <laughs> so what is going on with your? Um, I read your article yesterday. Oh yeah. Uh, AI. Well, you posed a question. You know. Um, you, oh, yeah. you what, what was the question that you posted? Yeah, the today? question was, can robots make beer? And I'm a big nerd, so anything that comes into technology or science, mm -hmm. I'm always into it. And I really like this idea of, like, I watch a lot of movies that talk about robots. So you have, like, iRobot, you had Ex Machina, yeah. these types of things that I really pushed an envelope, right? Fire. Her. <laughs> Her was another one that it wasn't yes. a physical robot, it was the idea of AI. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I love watching those type of movies because it really pushes the idea of, you know, robots. Like we've seen them in with our phones, we see them in, you know, a lot of like manufacturing and production. Um, we see it in our, you know, every day, like with Netflix, you know, Netflix gives you these suggestions, it's basing it off of what you like, what you didn't like. So we see it in our everyday piece, but a lot of that stuff is usually associated with you know, production, efficiency, or decision-making. Right. But the whole idea of can robots actually create something, mm -hmm. I think it's a really interesting topic. So when I started doing some research on how breweries are trying to incorporate AI or robots into this, um, I was really intrigued to see how they were actually trying to incorporate this into the brewing process. So a lot of breweries are doing it to kind of help increase their efficiencies with fermentation, uh, to kind of help them collect data points from their patrons on what they liked or didn't like. But there were a few that are starting to get into this whole idea of helping using AI to help build recipes. So for me, you know, I always ask people, you know, I've had this conversation with a few people prior to writing it. Do you really believe that a robot could create beer? And in a general sense, yes, it could. It could base it off of data points, pull in its information, build you out a recipe but it's really pulling from numbers, it's pulling from data. It's not yeah. pulling from experiences, it's not pulling from tastes, it's not pulling from yeah. smell, right? So that creativity piece that a lot of brewers will, will pull from to kind of push the boundaries of what a traditional beer should be or a diverse you know, traditional style, I yeah. think is something that robots currently cannot do. Right. Um, but I think over time, if we do allow them to have that continuous learning and we built that in, who knows, maybe later on, um, if we're able to kind of create a conscious, so to speak, for robots, maybe that could be something, right? Um, yeah. But I think currently, I don't think that's really in the sense of how humans do it, that robots can really creatively create a beer, I should say. Right. So that's, but that's where that came from. Yeah, I enjoyed the whole article. Uh, my what I wanted to ask, so right now it's just, you know, mainly you said breweries are doing it to, you know, well, the question is, can a, can a, can AI, you know, create a recipe and whatnot, right? Right. Um, do you think, or do you think breweries will be, I don't know, what breweries want that to happen or would they actually move towards that step or how do you, how do you feel about that? I think... What will probably happen is you'll probably have some resistance in the industry because if you take that piece out and say, oh, now it's automated, right, then where does that leave people? Yeah, right? yeah that's, that's kind of where I was, yeah. yeah. Right, there, and I think a lot of them, anymore? Yeah. right, so then, it, then it's like, you know, I think they would like to, there might be some collaborations where they might do like a, a couple of beers that are say, hey, this was created by AI, right? Um, you might even have a few breweries that would pop up that would do that, right? So you might, you know, down the road have someone who's like, well, I like beer, but I know I'm not a good brewer. But mm -hmm. hey, if this robot can, you know, this AI program can give me a recipe, then I could just, you know, 
you know, go and do the recipe, then that's great. But again, there's still going to be a human factor with it, right? Yeah, so even yeah. if, you know, AI comes up with this recipe, it's still going to be going into the hands of a human to actually make it. Now, down the road, would you see a brewery pop up where from, you know, end to end, it's all made by robots or by, you know, AI? Yeah. Uh, that would be pretty interesting if they did that. So yeah. recipes created by AI, robots are doing all that stuff. It's all automated. That would be really interesting to see how that worked out. Yeah. Because in that point, it's all numbers at that point. There's no, oh shit, I added in uh, too much grain. Okay, uh, how do we tweak this down the road to mm -hmm. kind of build, you know, get that there are gravity readings correct, right? Because that can happen sometimes. You're making yeah. a beer and you're like, oh wait, are we under or over? Okay, how do we, you know, do this in the next step to correct for that? So there's that that pivoting that happens, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have robots or AI that's doing it, that's it's all going to be by the numbers, unless there's a malfunction. But right. that would I be kinda, interesting. Too. I kind of only see that happening, you know, like how hip hop used to be. Like I, I see craft beer still, even though it's kind of blossoming some. I still see it like underground. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I would only see that happening if like big business came into the craft beer world, and then it did come up, come about, you know. Yeah. Uh, mass distribution, and you know, making sure yep, profit yep. margins and all that stuff was still looking oh, good. That's yeah. where that's all they cared about was getting the product out. Then the right. human capital would just be right. like, we don't care about humans, you know, we'll have, we're going to make it to make the most money that, right. yeah. So, right. But it's interesting though. So, uh, yeah. yeah. What else you got going on? Is that, is what, what's, can you let us know what your next one might be about if you want to, I don't know. Yeah. So I've, I've been debating, <laughs> <laughs> I've been debating. So I, I had a couple of ideas that were coming up and and then one of them was stemmed from my conversation I had with with Sam from Brother at the Bar. And he said, you know, we were talking about comics and he's like, you know, what type of beer do you think Loki would drink? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, well, I can only think of one beer. I think that would be pretty cool. And it was called Master of Disguise. Mm. And it was a stout yeah. that looked like an IPA. So it was a golden stout. A golden and stout. A golden, a golden stout. Golden stout. Right. So <laughs> Asgard. <laughs> exactly. Asgard. <laughs> everything's shiny, golden. And then on top of that, it's not what it appears, right? So I thought that that would be something that I think was really cool for Loki. And so I was thinking maybe I could write an article about some of my favorite, you know, comic, you know, characters, you know, do superheroes and villains and say what type of beer I think that they would drink, whether it's style or particular beers. Um, but if I wanted to stay more in the science route of things, I was thinking of maybe talking about the evolution of yeast, um, mm -hmm. because yeasts are a very important part of beer. And from a science point, you know, a lot of these yeast strains that we're using now are very specialized. Uh, but if you look at their, you know, a phylogenetic tree to see mm -hmm. how far they have evolved over time, you know, they are vastly different from their ancestral yeast strains. So I think it'd be really cool to talk about how over time we have tried to kind of, you know, mold these yeasts to give the type of properties that we want and what are those properties. Uh, I think that would be something cool to talk about or nice. uh, the effects of beer on our microbiome, our gut microbiome, because that's something I also used to research a lot. Interestingly enough, if you read articles, uh, non-alcoholic beer seem to have a better, have a, a more positive effect on the stomach than alcoholic beer, of course. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But it was really interesting to see which groups of bacteria actually bloom, depending on if you're drinking non-alcoholic versus alcoholic beer. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that would be really interesting to get into, to talk about why certain people might have, you know, uh, certain gut issues if they drink beer, because you're seeing certain types of bacteria blooming more than others. But uh, trying to what I would like to do is talk about these topics, especially heavily science, science heavy topics, mm -hmm. but try to keep it as, as palatable. As, as, yeah. As palatable <laughs> as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Cause a lot of times scientists will go on and on about stuff and you're like, I'm losing interest already or it's over. I ain't go to school head. for this. Yeah. <laughs> right. So there. my yeah. goal is for all of my other blog posts that are coming up, they're going to be, you know, 800 words or less. And I'll make sure to keep it where you can only take five to seven minutes to read it. So that's the whole point of that. But those might be some topics that might might come up next. So. Interesting. Well, do the latter one, the last one, because I want to find out how much I'm messing myself up. You know, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> For real, I, I definitely thought you were going to go into more because I'm, def- I'm interested now too. Right, I'm like, do that one so I can read it so I can figure right. out. Do that, yeah, yeah, do that one, do that one. Because <laughs> the other thing too, I was thinking if I were to do that one, I would follow it up with how it affects our immune system. And you know, a lot of us right now who are quarantined probably are drinking a little bit more than we normally would. Oh, and then look. a lot of us yeah. are not exercising like how we used to. So the effects of what is beer doing to our immune systems during a time of a pandemic, I think mm. would also be kind of interesting to, <laughs> to talk about. But yeah. I don't want to scare people away from drinking beer, right? So it's like, <laughs> it's a it fine out. line, <laughs> right? No, 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 no. Don't pour out good beer. <laughs> Just yeah. supplement with other things like fruits and vegetables and getting good sleep <laughs> type of thing. All so. right. Man, I want to nerd yeah. out some more. Um, you know, we we can go here. We can go to uh, Instagram. I, wanna, I know we got time I wanna, now, right? I, I want to talk about this. Let's, let's do this. Let's no, talk no. about the topics and see what that blooms into. Cause now, oh, okay, man, okay. So, uh, what do you want to talk about, Otis? Um. <laughs> We can do what y'all, y'all want to do Insecure first or y'all want to do... Let's the, do Insecure first. I feel like the insecure. album, man, there's so much to say about that album. Yeah, I okay. agree. I agree. Okay. okay. I agree. All right. uh, insecure, season four. Um, recap. Yeah. Um, uh, I know every... I, I, I like the show. I don't really watch shows. And I like the yes. show, one, because it is black. Mm-hmm. Of course. I can't, I'm not going to lie about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Two, it's very topical where it's relatable. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You have these sci-fi shows. You have these extra gangster shows. You have yep. all these, like, wild out, um, not everyday life shows of a black person. Like, this is an everyday life show. And then an everyday life show of black people. Yes. In our age range, also. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it's very relatable and very topical where you can bring it up to other people and it will spark a con- if you're watching it together, it will yes. spark up a conversation yes. after it's done. Um that's why I like the show. And, yeah. and you know, I spoiler alert, if you have I mean we now nah, it's been over for at least a week or two. That's right? on it's them been at this point. It's been a while. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Them. Right. Um I thought it was a, a very interesting choice that they had. Um, now I thought I, I I really always expected Lawrence to get back with Issa. I always yes. thought it was gonna happen. Yeah. But I thought Same. it was an interesting choice that they bring him back and then he's about to have a baby. You know, what it's I'm so saying? cliche. I'm sorry. I was so pissed. I was like, come on. Like, I'm yeah. like, okay, listen, you two are young professionals, right? Young professionals. Like, I get it. I get yeah. it. You're in a committed relationship, whatever. But it's yeah. like, why do you all, why do they have to have it where it's like, okay, finally, you have two people who they split, they, they had some issues, they recognized that they each had things they had to work on. They mm-hmm. worked on it, got good, got better in their professional life and their personal life. And they finally come back, they reconnect. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, but by the way, mm. he has to count on the way. And I'm like, they're trying to spice it up. They say, I'm yeah, like, you're going to yeah, spice yeah, it up yeah. some other way. Like, yeah, him yeah. moving away to go to, what was it, San Francisco, which it's, I think it's was a enough. good enough. That's spicy because, enough. Right. That's a big like, enough step. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's right. You know, tip. like he come, they come back and they're like, oh, well, you know, I won't be in this area. I'm going to be away. That could have set up a really nice next season of, okay, well, have you really grown? Because you two can't see what each other is doing all the time. Communication right. is going to be very important. Mm-hmm. Now you've got this added piece in here, which I think is going to be in the next season where he's going to be spending more time with her. And it's going to be like, well, is he going to start falling back into having feelings for, you know, yeah. his oh, baby mother? Uh, yeah, right. Condola. Right. Right. Well, yeah. And like, if they go that route in the next season, I'm, I'm like, I can't. I'm not. Yeah. You're just, yeah. just making it unnecessarily messy. <laughs> like, I feel like that. I feel like the season finale, like the series finale, is that they're gonna get married. I really do believe that. You know what I'm saying? You know what? No, they're probably gonna piss us off and kill off one yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably gonna kill off Lawrence. <laughs> with like, the, yeah. With how this went, you know, and I, I oh do appreciate. I do like the theme throughout the last season of, you know, the 
the dichotomy of Molly and Issa having these oh, yeah. relationship strings. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. at the end, it kind of comes back to needing your friend. You know, at the yeah. beginning, you remember it started off with, you know, I don't fuck with Molly no more. Like, that's how the yep. first episode started. And now their yep. life is so, you know, crazy for them both that they really need each other. Now, I appreciate that, but I feel like that was a reach as well, Denise. That it was like, damn. We to a certain like, extent, yeah. Like, I dang, so, G. Like, like, Molly I, was wrong in a lot of situations. Yeah. Molly was you, wrong in a lot of see, situations. This is, this is the thing that gets me that really bothers me about how they do certain, how they portray certain types of um, friendships in media. Yeah. It's like with women, it's always ha- it always has to be this catty, passive-aggressive type mm. of, oh, you know, they, like, you can't just tell me what your issue is. And every time I think, you know, Molly tried to, here comes Issa, oh, bringing in Condola to talk, to bring to their little their little lunch and thing. She didn't mm, even ask her mm-hmm, if I should do that. Mm-hmm. Didn't even tell her that she was thinking about doing it. Like you sprung it, like you kind of sprung it on her and didn't even give Molly the chance and really say, mm, maybe I want to talk to you about something a little bit more personal. No, right. okay. Or when she bailed on her, you know, when she was drinking uh, tequila for, I think it was what the Thanksgiving dinner thing, right? Yeah. And I'm like, again, a time when you probably could have had that heart to heart, it didn't happen. So, right. and then with Molly throwing these little passive aggressive sayings yeah. to Issa, like, you know, she's trying to grow and yet yeah. you still want to throw some catty one liners at her. Like what was the, what was even the point? Right. Yeah. right. So I hate how, when you see a lot of shows where you have women who are friends, it's always going to be some guy that gets in between them. Uh, there's this passive catty competition that's going on between them right mm-hmm. um or it's these clicks where you have women groups of women who are like well i don't really hang out with that group but we can at least you know appear to be nice on camera like how they do with reality tv shows and yeah. i'm like out of all of my female friendships that i have i have never had a situation where i could not come to them and say hey i got it we need to talk about some stuff you know i never have had them not respect you know relationships my personal you know growth you know job none of that i've never had that and i really hate that they always show this with women like we can't ever be a unified front right Mm, like guys they show them on shows they can talk shit you know you know screw each other's girls or whatever and yet they come back together like glue like it's nothing you know but like with women it's just like oh well i'm i have insecurity so i'm gonna make you feel bad because i'm projecting that onto you and it's not like we can't just be you know, like, I hate when they do that, because there's a lot of things they do with black men in, in cinema as well. It's just like, you know. Interesting, because I'm, I'm, when I'm looking at it, I, I can't say I thought about that, because yeah. that's the I, I saw it as uh, two friends that I may have seen interact like that before. You know mm. what I'm saying? Not, okay. I mean, I feel like this, these type of characters that's being drawn right now are somebody that i've seen before you know what i'm saying i mean i've and seen it too that's the thing like i've like, seen it but especially the scene with um a character like molly who reacted the way she did in the pool with andrew and his brother you know what i'm saying and how she reacted i know some people like that <laughs> I know one or two people like. Are that. you gonna Are you gonna name drop? And you just you know you just gonna. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what's well, not? You know what I'm saying? I might be married to that type of person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, it's nice but, knowing you, Kamal. <laughs> Otis, nice Otis, you. Otis, no, Otis, no. But he's like, don't put me into that. Yeah, I, um, don't know, I don't know nothing. Right. It wouldn't be. I don't know for Bleed real. Though, it would. It would be that fifth. extreme. <laughs> It wouldn't be that extreme, yeah. But right. surely, I've seen that that energy before out of somebody with a situation like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I yeah. thought, and that's like, man. Um, and everything that kind of tumbled after that, I'm seeing these characters as like some of the things that Molly did. I almost felt like were out of her character from time to time, mm-hmm. but. I would have to think about what she's done from season one, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think the other thing, too, about it is, you know, she's got to a point where she's just tired of seeing Issa 
just make things messy because she she just made a lot of choices that you kind of just shake your head and go i don't know why you went that route like yeah why did you do that so over time i can understand because we probably have had some friends where you see them doing some dumb stuff and you're just like but you've been down this road before why did you keep doing it right so i can understand why she would get a little fed up but it's just a simple fact that say it tell her right Pull her to the side and have a conversation with her about it. Don't Versus throw these the jab. little jabs when she's trying to be vulnerable with you. Or like when after she did the whole, right, um, right. when she was inviting the investors over to try and, you know, uh, convince them to invest in the block party, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're cleaning up and Molly makes a comment that she did. And you go, yeah. well, what was even the point in that, right? right? And, you know, I it's like little things like that, right? It's yeah, like yeah. have that conversation or, you know, when they I went on their hike, and Issa made her comment. And it's like, again, what's the what's I the point you. of you making these little jabs at each yeah. other, right? Like, have the conversation, just talk about it. But I agree, I agree. I get it, it's for a show, you wanna build up the tension, but I'm yeah. just like, right, right, right. I, I feel have like a conversation! That, <laughs> right. I feel but like you that, can also do that that way without having him be like that, but go ahead. Okay. I feel like also with that, it was, you know, I. I wouldn't say that Molly was necessarily jealous, but I think I think Molly always kind of wanted, you know, mm. a relationship that maybe, you know, Issa and Lawrence kind of had, you know, at the beginning mm. and whatnot. And Molly always had these relationships that we like like this season, she was really pushing for this thing with, yep. with Andrew to work. Because she has yeah. the success, right? Like she's a lawyer. She she right. don't worry about nothing, but right. the love life, you know, is always tumultuous. You know, it's like so I don't mm. know. I, you Not know to say Issa had the best relationships, but you know, right, right. right. Her other stuff is always just Matthew. Right? But you know yeah, what? Yeah. I identify with Molly in that because it's like if you're a go getter, you've got goals, you're able to reach them. You know, you're quite successful in things. Like on paper, you look great. Like no one can tell you anything, right? Yeah. But you know, when you start looking at your relationships, like I've been single for the past four years now, right? And I had to take a step back after my last relationship and say, okay. So what went wrong there? And what went wrong? <laughs> what went wrong? Uh, and it, you know, it takes a bit of maturity for you to admit. Like, of course, the other person, because I, you know, it just was a an emotionally abusive relationship, right? And you have to say to yourself, okay, you go through that. Fine, it happened, and I allowed it to happen longer than it should. But I also had my flaws. And yeah. you have to be a very mature person to understand and, and to actually accept that, yeah, you did, you probably also had some flaws in it. It's what, mm -hmm. you know, flaws, you also had your mistakes in it. And being able to man up, apologize for it and move on, you know, because you, you have to work on it, move on, and try not to bring that baggage onto the next person, right? So yeah. instead of just jumping in right into the next thing, I'm like, I'm just gonna take a little bit of a hiatus. Mm -hmm work on myself, try to figure this stuff out. And I can understand that with her, which is like, you really want that because you're getting older, yeah. right? I don't want kids, but at the same time, you are getting older. And you're like, you're getting to yeah. a point where you're like, fuck, I don't want to be, you know, pushing 40, 50 and still don't have anybody, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know I'll be fine, but nobody wants that, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can understand why she was pushing to try and make it work, why she mm -hmm. was just like, come mm -hmm. on, we can... Yeah, okay, we got these differences. We can that was painful out. when I was watching right? it, too. I'm like, ah, Molly, no, no. You like, know? I just felt like it, it, it. maybe the whole time, you know, it was... And for him to call it out and say, like, yo, what are we doing? I'm like, oh. But see, yeah. but that also speaks to him, <laughs> to his character, right? That he yeah. actually saw that and said, okay, we need to talk about this. Right. And I really like that they highlighted, had a guy to actually say that. Yeah. And not have it always be the woman being the one that has it who strikes up that conversation because mm. it's like, you know, I, I don't think there's enough credit given to guys out there who are emotionally mature and can be vulnerable. Right. Yeah. Um, I think society really pushes men to be these emotionless creatures. Yeah. Um, and if they show any type of, you know, sadness or hurt or anything along those lines, jealousy even it, it can be viewed as all oh, your weak which is like no yeah. i have feelings i'm a human right yeah. so i really like that they did that with him and had him say okay well what what are we doing you know like yeah. what we need to have this conversation and not That's just sweeping under the rug and just 
well, you know, hey, at least I still get to banger, so that's good, you know, type yeah, of right, thing, right. you know. Yeah. So there was that. I'll we'll plug my laptop in real quick. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, with that, I mean, I mean, I, I we we may have explored black <laughs> insecurity. <laughs> To uh, the point where we can move on, maybe. Hey, uh, hey, you know. But yeah, that is the thing about the show that it is. You know, I got to think about it. It is called Insecure, so mm. you know they can't come. Molly or uh, Easter can't come to the table. Like, look, this is who I am. I like to, you know, what I'm saying Issa might feel I like. Fuck up. <laughs> Man, you know what I'm saying? I, hey, look, I feel what you're saying. But also, and that's your judgment of me, that's fine. But also, I'm out here kicking it. I'm yeah. messing with the TSA dude, and now here come Lawrence, and I want to mess back with Lawrence. That's what I want to do right now. Yeah. All right? That's what I want to do right now. But that's not happening. It's like, oh, oh, I'm so insecure. <laughs> I need to be liked by you. Or you know what? Maybe I don't. I don't mess with you anymore. Exactly. I'm insecure. Man, I feel like if people, but the thing is, is that when you think about society, right? Living in your truth is very hard to do. Mm. And I think the society really won't yeah. let you a lot of times do that because if you did that, a lot of people wouldn't fit in the box that we try to put each other into. Bad. You know? That's so sad. And, Bad. right? So, you know, you have to, and I think this was, this was something that one of my friends said to me she was like, listen, as much as you want this person to be this type of way or this type of partner for you, you have to sometimes accept the fact that maybe that's just not them. And it's unfair for you to try to change that person or impose these type of things on that person because that's just not who they are. And when she said that to me, I was like, whew. Yeah, so, no, you know, you got to sit back and you're like, damn, I am kind of doing that. Right. And you and you have to stop and say, I am doing that. And you have to, you know, take a step back and really say, you know what? You're right. This person is not what I'm looking for. I need mm. to stop this and go find it, you know, instead of trying to impose that idea of what you want onto that person. Because I wouldn't want someone doing that to me. So it's yeah. like, how can I, you know, be a hypocrite and do that to someone else? So I was like, man, all right. So, yeah. you know, sometimes women, we can admit that we are wrong, okay? <laughs> true, true. And we do apologize. So I will put that out there yes. for all of my, all of my sisters <laughs> of all colors. Yeah, <laughs> <out there>. yeah. <laughs> well, this is what we, this is what we had you. Cause it was like, at first we was like, yo, we can't, I think we was talking about uh, having our, we was like, we couldn't do a, yeah. a insecure episode with our homies, uh, like our homies, Aunt P and Terrell. It's like, That'd be just too. It'd be, too, it it'd be, be so. No, we can have we can have either one of them on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with other women on the show. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And see that dynamic. Battle of sure, the sexes. Like, that would be a good one. Honestly, a battle of the sexes would be a good one. That'd be extreme with it. Yeah, it seems I'd, like. I'd be a moderator. That's all I'm, I'm moderating. Yeah, you got right. you two got to moderate. That's it. That's what I'm doing. That's a, <laughs> right. Michael um, Jackson popcorn meme. Right. <laughs> one last thing I do want to say. One last thing I do want to say about insecure is I, I appreciate also them trying to touch on like the postpartum um, part with the, what's what's the character's name? Um, Tiffany. Yes. Yeah. That whole you that know, was interesting too. Yeah. That was very interesting. How they I think they just wanted to shine light on that to say yes. this is also that something people actually deal with that is actually that's real. You know. So yeah. Yeah. shout out to Tiffany and- dropping that in there. You know. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 a, it's one of those taboo topics, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I myself haven't had any kids, but I know women who have, have gone through that. And, yeah. you know, it's a major change to your body. You know, mm. hormones are changing, your body shape changes. You had something living in you for months, yeah. sucking away at your, you know, at all of your nutrients. You're trying to build a human, basically. Yeah. And afterwards you know you now have to you know a lot of women like to breastfeed that breastfeed some don't but you know that's a lot of like you know it's a lot of your body is going through during that time and and it's it's i don't know what it's like but hearing how 
you know, you're not all there, you're battling some of these issues that are coming up, you know, and yeah. you're, you're fluctuating between emotions. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's a hard thing to do. And if you don't have a partner who is there to be supportive and to be understanding of what's going on, yeah. it can just make things 10 times worse. So I, I mm-hmm. did appreciate how, like you said, they did bring that up. And they didn't do like how they do in some movies where it's just like really extreme, which it can happen. But, you know, it was just nice how they tried to add some empathy to it and yeah. not make it yeah. be this very taboo, stigmatized type of thing. So yeah. I really like that as well. And it was, um, you know, they don't show it often in the black community either. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's good right. that they did that. But it's also, you know, you were as it's a gradual thing being pregnant, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's ripped out of you and it's different for your body. You right. know what I'm saying? And yeah. so that affects, and then it's like on the, once the baby is here, it's crying. It's not just something that's in your stomach. You know what I'm saying? And that's it's a, real a lot to deal with. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot to deal with as a woman that just had the child. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. And That's what I'm saying. You're tired. You're tired. Lack of sleep. Your body's different. Like, it's not like what it was before the it's baby. A right. And a lot of women have put on weight. It's like, mm-hmm. this, you know? the switch is like, as soon as that baby comes out, it's different now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's no yeah. gradual thing. I know it's your different. hair. Like, the thing that gets me there, talk about, like, the hair changes. The skin can sometimes change, you know? Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, some start having, like, skin issues. And, yeah. you know, you've got weight yeah. issues that come into it. I mean, all yeah. kinds of stuff go wrong. You know, your yeah. whole digestive system can sometimes be out of whack. Like, it's just yeah. all over the place. All yeah. over the place. So. Bugged out. <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> it's messed up. Uh, the beauty of birth. <laughs> yeah. The beauty, yes. How we all got here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh um, no, some of us were born in a test tube what are you talking about <laughs> that's there you go <laughs> that's all I'm i can say space, no. <laughs> I'm a real. Oh, but man. um the album sienna taylor sienna taylor dropped a new album <laughs> i had to get it back up yeah right um oh. I don't even know what number album this is for her. Yeah. This may be her first official full album, but she's had it some other be. projects. She yes. had other yeah. projects before this. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if this is, I don't know exactly what this is for her. You know what I'm saying? It may be just another I think it's album. just number th- three, I think. I think oh, it okay. is. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. <clears throat> Yeah. V2, I know she had some other projects. Though. V2, the, lad, the the album that came out the, in 2018, the Kanye produced joint. That oh yeah, one. KTSE. Right. KTSE. And then KTSE, you have yep. you have the album. So this is just her third. Yeah. Official project, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, and I rock with it. It was uh-huh. great. Yeah. Honestly, I was shocked. I was listening to all the songs. I was just like, listen, I got so many vibes of like 90s Kanye. Yeah. I got. It was like Kanye vibes, 90s vibes. I had, you know, like the whole Timberland. There was a yeah. couple of yeah, 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 songs with yeah. Missy that I was just like, oh, I had yeah, Aaliyah. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is, this is just a beautiful album. I thought, you know, the different types of songs she had on there, she had some, some lines in there that I was just like, listen, you are speaking everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. fits me perfectly. Uh, I... I wrote down so many notes on this. I was just like, yeah, she, Let's go. she, do went, it, in. Do it. she went in on it. Like, I mean, honestly, I was listening to when she had certain types of features that were on some of the songs. I felt like the only one I felt like that was unnecessary was Future. I know a lot of people. I agree. Future, I agree. But I felt like Futures was just unnecessary. I agree. I agree. Everybody I agree. else made sense. That's a good, that's a good, yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree. Cause I like, I thought, I was hoping you didn't say Quavo cause I really like Quavo on that song. Yeah, I really like Quavo on that song, but I agree. Right, but Future's always just like, oh man, but I feel like everybody knows she matched them, their, their, their flow, their voice perfectly with the beat. Like the very first one, you know, come back to me with Rick Ross. It's just something about his voice, which is really on that, I was just like, (laughs) And it, that song yeah. reminded me so much of Alicia Keys with some, with some reason. Just I was yeah. just like, had that vibe with it, which was really nice, right? Old school Alicia Keys, not 
not the new stuff. Just yeah, it has a you don't know my name kind of vibe. It has a it you did. don't know my name kind of vibe. It did. Yeah. It did. And that was, I was like, okay, once I heard that first, and I was like, cool, okay. But then when we get into Wake Up Love, yeah. it was really the, 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 the one line that was said in there by her husband that I thought was like really, really something. I like it that was, song too. That one was good. He was like, the part where he said he'll save her from a burning building and wear the burns as a gold, as gold medals. I was just like, you know, listen, that's bars. <laughs> Iman with the bars. You know, I was like, okay, yeah. okay. Like, yeah. I don't want nobody to burn, but damn, that that's 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 saying something, yeah. right? So I was like, I like I like that one as well. I thought it was cute how she, you know, kind of showed that she was pregnant again, and I'm thinking, this girl, oh, yeah. she ain't had another kid. Yeah. I'm like, this other kid gonna be styling because the first kid is just too cute. Yeah. So you know, the yeah, second yeah. kid. I don't know if they said they're having a boy or girl yet, but mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever. If it's a boy, girl, it don't matter. Like, this kid's yeah. about to be awesome. Because <laughs> her first, her daughter is just too cute. I love her daughter so much. So much. So a few things about the album. Um, is It's called The Album, and it's broken it down into five sections. Studio yeah. A, Studio B, or Studio L, Studio yeah. B, Studio U, Studio M. So she broke it down like that, and each like studio is like a different feel. Such a different right. vibe, you, know you can tell. It's a different yeah. vibe. You're, you're the um, and it's basically a love story in that way. You know what I'm saying? So you got like the early, the earlier songs are like beginnings of love and all this. Yep. You know what I'm saying? She got her sex portion in there. Which is hilarious. Yeah, like, oh, 69. No. 69 was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, she got it. That's the song right there. That's like, she got like the sad, the, the breakup situational songs, killer, bad, like the, the conflict yeah. songs, lose each other. Um, but then they trying to get back together towards the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, try again, friends. How you want it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, um Friends, man. Listen, friends I, I that one reminded me so much of music soul child on that one. Oh yeah. yeah. I, was oh, like, yeah. I was like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I just yeah. love the vibes from this album, man. Yeah. Yeah. It has good know, vibes from, all over. It's just yeah, good. but you know, from bad, it was the line where she said, upgrade in my view. I was like, <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. Like it, you did more good than damage, you know. And I'm like, I like that vibe from it because a lot of times when you have a bad breakup, you know, it's always, oh, it was terrible. You yeah, know, it was right. it was just this and that. And it's like, no, a lot of times it's just a learning lesson. I mean, yeah, it sucks sure. you got to go through it, but you got to start looking at the positive, you know, positiveness of it. And I thought that that yeah. was a, a nice way to do it. Honestly, I really like that. Perspective. I, I, yeah. I enjoy just her. I don't, as a writer, she doesn't really... I don't know. I mean, this is only her third album, so I guess she'll, she'll have more albums and people may, you know, become accustomed to her more. But I think she needs more. Like, her harmonies are good on this joint. Very her lyrics good. are good. She can her, sing. She has some she's harmony. She's a good artist. She's a very good artist. And I think her strongest point is her writing, man. If, yep. if she's the one writing, you know, all of her lyrics. If she is, years. right. Yep. yep. I think she yeah. is. Yeah. I think she um, is. The beats on here are good. They... they it's pulling from a lot of different era, uh, eras, like you said, you know, 90s vibes and whatnot. If you're looking for, like, some good R&B, people say, oh, there's no more good R&B. They can, they can throw this on. This is solid, this was, straightforward this, this R&B. It. It really yes. Classic R&B. Like, 90s sounding R&B. It so is. I mean, it's all about the emotions, right? Whether they're yeah. good, bad, freaky, yeah. you know, just chilling, which is nice. I mean, that's what R&B is supposed to do for you, right? You want something that's going to hit all the different areas and maybe even across the timeline of your life. And I feel like this is what this album does. So I feel like in every song, you're going to hear something that's going to make you think of someone or of a certain time, whether it's your current person that's in your life or someone previously, there's going to be a song on here. You're going to be like, mm. and then you're sitting there, mm, okay, well, all right. Yeah, you know, like my, own, only, uh, my only <laughs> critic, my only criticism of the album. Here you go. Yeah. Go ahead. Here we go. It's a little long to me. <laughs> it's a little long to me. It's a little you know, lengthy. That's what she yeah. said. That's what she said. Go I ahead. mean, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> nice, 
Nice. But you know what's I funny? did. She, it's a little longer. Yeah, he did Bob, this too. Bob, Bob, Bob. <laughs> Bob. You know what gets me about it is a lot of songs, but a lot of those songs are really short. And I'm like, I wish some of them were longer, while others I felt could be a little bit shorter. <laughs> Interesting. Because <laughs> I mean, to me, it's just a. Oh, uh, every song is at least. I feel like every song is almost four minutes long, which is long for a song. Well, the thing about it is. What the, Back it's in the day, they used to do 15 minute songs, man. <laughs> You're right. Nothing, okay? You're right. But the album would be four <laughs> tracks long. <laughs> you know what, though? I think it, it was, well, I enjoyed all of it, though, even though it was 23 songs. But 23 songs, it was still only an hour and 17. That's a yep. long time. <laughs> yeah. But I think, so some of them is like two, three minutes, though. You know what I'm saying? That's the yeah. way right. that, that's that's a that's a, that is a long time. That is a long time. An hour like, and 17 right. minutes? That's a long well, we know, time. We know Kamal is a short, he's a, a you know, he's not a marathon. <laughs> we'll go when he's saying <laughs> Clearly he's more in the short, oh short sprints. Sport, you know, it's sprints. Only right. <laughs> it's only right. It's only right. Man, hour 17. <laughs> I love it. I love Look, it. But I think that's also a product of the time, man. We get we get these short albums, you know. So now, you know, yeah, I can deal. If it was, we not used to it. If it was fifty minutes, I'd be like, yeah. still mad, still mad. <laughs> but exactly, Illmatic is like forty something. Yeah, minutes. Yeah. But not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. But, you um, think, yeah, but that's a different. That's a different. I, no, no, you're right. Right. you're right. You're right. Totally right. You're right. Like that's you're right. like a whole other. I think it depends. But I'm just on the saying, bucket, like right? I'm, I'm. Even, I mean, 90s, even if she was making a 90s feeling album, she's right on the money with, right. even for, I mean, because all of those albums in the early 90s are like an hour and 10. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know why? Because they weren't rushing. They were trying to get you to feel something, man. Mm. Not just this, let me drop a quick beat, get you jumping, yeah. hyping, you know, all that type True. of stuff. Like they were like, feel this with me. Go on this emotional roller coaster yeah. with me while I talk about my feelings type of yeah, thing, yeah. you know? That's and crazy. That's what she did. I'm not gonna lie though. Like I like a lot of the album. I like um yeah, oh, and the intro. intro. The intro, intro is a real call. Yes. Her really giving birth on the bathroom floor. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yo. And then the first song, Junior's on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, yo, that's this is this is kind of cool, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know. So the first time I heard it, I didn't know that that call was the real call of her giving birth. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And yeah. then to learn that, I'm like, yo, that's kind of cool. That's kind of dope. That's kind of real in that sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I like "Come Back to Me," "Wake Up Love," "Low Key" with Erica Badu. Let's be like the first thing coming on. I like a lot of these songs. I like a low lot key, of these low key. I just felt like was such a good like sequel song for Next Lifetime, man. Like I just man. felt like it was like it was. you say it, it and then you come back like maybe we could actually do something here, but maybe I should. Erica Spit too. <laughs> yeah, Erica Spit. Erica did her thing. She did you know? her thing, man. And Erica, uh, and Erica, Erica also I mean, beat. Erica beat Jill Scott too, uh, Denise. Erica, Erica won that battle too. Uh, this she definitely time. did. Look, we got. <laughs> listen, listen. Look, we don't got to. We gotta revisit that. We ain't gotta... Yeah, you got to do a whole another one with me on that one because I'm like, listen. <laughs> that's funny. I love that's Jilly. Funny. Jilly from Philly. That's my girl. I love. Like, I think I've always preferred Jill. Over Erica, like I like Erica's work, but I really? just something about Jill that that's what I'm finding out to about the 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 opinions about like who won and who yeah. lost. I had it a tie, honestly. At, at once, once it, I had it, man. I, right, I had that's it what, I'm like, I, I don't think Erica, man. Yeah, I don't think anybody really won out because they really built each other up during yes, that. Yeah, that's the thing time, about that. Which it was is, nice. Yeah, yeah. And they talked about how they knew each other, what their actual friendship was, which yeah. a lot of people don't know about. And, but it was just some of the things that, like for some of the songs that Jill had picked from her, her, you know, catalog that I was just like, there's a lot of stories as to why those songs were coming out and you could see right. it. Right. She was being vulnerable in that moment about certain things. And I was just mm -hmm. like, her music, I think yeah. is just, 
it speaks differently to the soul that I think what Eric well, is music well, does. Nice. I agree. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. But I will say the one song besides, you know, 69 that I thought was like, just saying, uh, was the 1-800 one night. I like that True. one a lot. That yeah. one was short. Oh, wow. I was just like, yeah. Yeah, she's like, you know, you want to call. I'm like, see, right, I right. For a few people that I know, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that song was dope. That song, was you know, dope, you're man. like, go ahead and call, you know. And it's more so like an it's more so like an uh, interlude vibe too. I like that joint, man. Right, it was it was yeah. smooth, but the one song I think that really got me, and I think it spoke to a previous relationship, was Concrete. Mm -hmm. I like that song gas, a lot. Yeah, yeah, she's like gaslighting my emotions. But yeah. the part that got me was when she said, "When I get reactive, right? How did she say? Oh, you tell me I need to chill, right? And it's like it's it's that toxic shit that you do. And I'm like, you know, you know. And I've seen that on both sides. Like I've been through it, and oh. I've seen where a guy has had that happen to him, right? Where the mm. chick gaslights him a lot, right? And I'm like, you know, I hate when people do that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like you do something and then the person, you know, over time, you know, you try to remain calm. You're like, you know what? I know what you're trying to do, but then you snap and you react. Yeah. And they're like, see, see, now you're crazy. And it's like, but you, you were poking a bear and you were purposefully doing that. Like, why would yeah. you do that? Yeah. And then you want to, but they do that to make you second guess yourself. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I can't, I've seen it happen. I've been through it. Mm -hmm. I, it bothers my soul. When she said that, I was just like, Ooh, Okay, you know what? Let me yeah, yeah. <laughs> go that's to one the of those... next song here. Let's go to the next song. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one of those songs that displays how well she writes. That's what I'm saying. I thought right. that was a yeah. well written song. I thought that was that one was nice. Song. Concrete, Concrete, I think, was probably one of my favorites. Like it made me upset. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, it's a good song. <laughs> exactly. You start getting into your feelings, man. You like <laughs> true, true. <laughs> right. You... True, true. <laughs> I'm gonna keep quiet. Let me just word up. Word up. Song. Leave us with some um Tiana some, Taylor, some, the album. Check it out. I, I want Denise to leave us with some, some good words. Well, first of all, tell people where they can follow you at first. Where they can follow yeah. you at and where they can read the article at. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you follow me because I'm not on Facebook. I got rid of Facebook years ago. What about Twitter? Uh, no, nah, not you know what? I'm thinking about it slowly but surely. But uh, right now I'm only on Instagram. I know. Okay, okay, I know. Yeah. No, I'm, I don't I'm like not. Twitter at all. So see, I, <laughs> some people are really good with it, and I love reading their tweets. I'm like, ooh, you know, right, right. But I'm like, do I want that? Do I? I get you gotta right. constantly keep I up with you. it. I feel you. Right, feel like Instagram, you. you can drop some stuff here and there. And you're like, you can still maintain your presence, but with Twitter, it's like you, it's constant. Yeah. And I got a, a job that eats up a good amount of hours. I ain't got the time to do that, right? right so, right. um, but I, you can find me on Instagram at Kiki Suds. Uh, my website that I put up where I put all my blogs up um, and we'll be putting my store for merchandise up soon. It's called Sud Sutra. So uh, that would be my, my website there. Um, but in the meantime, um, the only other thing that I want to talk about a little bit would be the, this book that I'm writing. I had a black artist, which I will share with you guys what this book cover looks like because I think it's just absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's called The Fro in the Room. And I've been interviewing people mm -hmm. who are in the craft beer industry who are Black and getting their experiences of what it means to be in the craft beer scene. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to just get brewers, you know, people who were, you know, managing tap rooms. I wanted mm -hmm. to get people who were in the craft beer scene who were doing other things as well. So photographers, writers, podcasts, uh, podcasters, um, you know, people who are doing diversity and inclusion and going around and teaching people about how to better, you know, uh, manage their teams and to be more inclusive and welcoming yeah. and also just social media management. So I've done all those type of interviews so far, but the book cover art is just fantastic. It basically is showing the back of a, of a black woman with this giant Afro walking mm -hmm. into a bar and you wow. see the white patrons looking at her and there's a, a wide array of faces. So some of them look mm. surprised while others look like, why the fuck are you here? And above her head, it says fro in the room. So I'm mm. hoping to get about 20 to 30 people. I've hit 13 people in interviewed so far. Right. Um, but I'll be putting up a post about it soon to try and get more people. But, uh, and, you know, might include some other fellow podcasters that I hey. know of. Uh, mm. So 
uh, you know, maybe, you know, two black men who are doing some <laughs> awesome things, you know. Wow, um, wow. Right. So I'll see if they're interested. Uh, but sure. I really want this book to to take off because, you know, we have these these articles that are written about us, right? But mm-hmm. they're very few and far in between. And I want this to be something that can be seen in breweries, it can be seen in bookstores, that people can really understand what it's like to be black in these type of whitewash industries. Mm. Um, so if the book really takes off, like I hope it does, I can actually translate this into other areas. So like for me, science, it's very whitewashed depending on which, you know, um, field you go into. Right. Um, and so you, it could be things like that. It could be the food industry, which is another big one that's been, you know, taken off wine, which we mm. also know is really, uh, seen as a, a white, you know, white influenced type of industry. Right. Um, yeah. there are certain types of sports which we know about as well. So it would just be interesting to be able to have that type of series to really highlight what black people are doing in these different industries and how they're contributing and what they want in the future to really feel like they are a part of it and not just an accessory. So. Okay. Mm. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah. I know you're trying to book. That's awesome. Trying to, yeah. at least I'm trying to do make, you know, do justice with it, but what I really want for this is to have the intro and the outro, like to have start off with a, a poem and end with a poem. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking for people who do beautiful spoken word type of stuff that I think would be really good to have a certain tone with it to be the intro, but then have the outro be more futuristic for looking um, of what we would want. So I'm looking for people for that. Um, but uh, I really want this to be a, a collaborative effort, not just from the interviews that I'm doing, but from the artists that I will work with, as well as the um, poetry writers that I'm hoping to find as well. Okay. Word. Word. Beautiful. Well, that's another one, people. Uh, I wish I had more beer, but I don't. Uh, I'll drink more later on. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Beers and bars. Oh, Beers yo, I, bars. I was slow sipping. I'm sorry. I was slow sipping. I was... <laughs> Trying to enjoy the conversation. You know? <laughs> true that, true that, true that, true that. <laughs> Till next time, true people. That. Peace.